Hello and welcome traveler. Join us today on our quest to craft this book nook. I started by drawing a map of the street and the buildings in scale. Then it was time to transfer them onto cardboard. I found the back side of an old drawing pad in my stash, which was extremely thick and perfect for the houses. After cutting out the houses, I transferred the drawings onto the cardboard. Then I went on to cut out the windows and the doors. What makes medieval houses so enchanting to me is the layering of their floors. I glued all different pieces of cardboard together. With the first pieces glued together, it was time for the traditional cardboard dance. We wanted the houses to be in scale for our little tabletop figurines. To add a little more flavor to the house, I made little arches out of foam to go on top of the door. To recreate the iconic look of these buildings, we cut some thin cardboard into strips and glued them on to act as wooden beams. We used wood glue because this allowed us to reposition the beams slightly after we glued them on. We wanted a big gatehouse at the back, so I cut one out out of a big foam block using our hot wire cutter. I'm still learning to use this, um, so don't mind some of the wacky techniques I use to create the shapes. For the roof of the gate tower, I cut out some sharp triangles and glued them together. The windows need some more details, so let's add them. Now it's shingles time. We wanted all our houses and the tower to have shingled roofs, so we needed a lot of shingles. Strengthen your heart, because this is only the beginning. Or in this case the end, because we didn't film all the shingling we did. We glued the shingle strips on in an alternating pattern to create this look. We first saw this technique on Stutzen Studios YouTube channel. I found this beautiful plastic thing in our stash, and I think it will make the perfect medieval windows. I'm not sure if this is historically accurate. I simply drew diamond patterns onto the plastic. We painted the window holes black now, because we can't access them later. We wanted one of the houses to have some interior. Yeah. The idea was that you can open the roof of this house and look inside the attic. The room needs some nice wooden boards for the floor. I used a thin cardboard for it. I cut them to pieces and glued them in. And now time for more shingles. This part of the roof 
I want it to be on a hinge so you can open it and look inside the attic. To create the hinge I used a small piece of cloth and glued it in place using super glue. I also glued my thumb in place, but you can't see that. I want some curtains for the windows so it's not possible to look inside. I took some paper napkins and cut it to size. Then I hang them onto some toothpicks and painted them with watered down glue. They look pretty cute. Meanwhile I made little doors for every house out of cardboard. This door gets a little window. I used some cute little beads as doorknobs. After giving all the houses a grey color base coat, they were ready for painting. We wanted our houses to look colorful and inviting. All the colors were inspired by real buildings in the lovely town of Rotenburg, Germany. If you ever have the chance to visit this place, I highly recommend it. This is one of my favorite parts, painting the details. I really like to give the building similar colors in the shadow areas and the highlights. That will help to draw it all together in the end. I want the city to get a romantic fairy tale vibe. Here is a quick pro tip. Make sure your coffee has a similar color to the building you want to paint next. Also make sure to not accidentally drink the paint instead. I imagine the blue sky being reflected in the colors from the buildings. I really love the blue wooden doors. After some quick finishing touches, we are done with painting the buildings. To add some details and make the buildings look more lived in, we made several small items and props. One of the buildings is a potion shop slash pharmacy and we decided we wanted a small little skeleton in the window. I used some polymer clay to sculpt directly onto the cardboard. This is the closest I had to a bone color. Spooky. This rogue character from the board game Gloomhaven will live in the attic. To make her feel more at home, I will sculpt some tiny items from the game that she collected during her career. This is her leather armor. A pair of eagle goggles. And a giant hand. And some rocket boots. As the character is a huge book nerd, I will make her some books she can purchase in the bookshop next door. I simply folded some paper and painted them in vibrant colors. I was lucky enough to get some help. Huh? They look so cute. Let's glue them in place. I made a little cupboard for all the items in the meantime. We wanted our book nook to have lights. As a light source, we chose these LED strips. You can just cut them into the length you need and they are relatively easy to work with. After gluing them in place, I just sorted them together. 
the LEDs glow bright white, which is perfect for emulating sunlight. We also wanted some warm light inside the building, so I experimented with putting some paint on the LED to tint the light. This orange gave the best result. For the outer case of the book nook, I used some plywood and glued the pieces together with wood glue. From the very beginning we had a paper prototype for the whole build, but we didn't show that on camera. Here is a small glimpse of it. We transferred the layout on a piece of foam and then used a pencil to carve in a cobblestone texture. We also put some more pieces of foam on top of it to give the elevation some variation. I mixed different pastel colors for the street. All the different colors give the street a nice natural look. It also looks tasty to me for some reason and I had to resist the urge to bite into the foam. I added some earth shade for more depth. I also dabbed on some green and blue tones to tie it together with the houses. Now it's time to add the sky. This is an amazing trick I saw on the channel of Sammy Model Bow. For adding this paper sheet, it will trick the eye later because there will be no visible corner. We want some grass and moss growing on our street, so here we dab on some glue to later put on some static grass. We use several kinds of grass and flock and moss to give a natural and organic look. Is this enough grass? I quickly made a tree from some rest from our Dark Souls diorama, added different colors of foliage and finished with a sprinkle of green. Broccoli. I also made some static grass tufts to give it some variation. By the way, look at this. This will be an optical illusion. Let's plant the trees. I also added some foliage to cover the gap. And this is what you will see when you look through the gate. To make the illusion perfect, I will also paint on the wall and the building. So you will only see fields and woods in the distance when looking through the gate. We want this book nook to look beautiful from the outside too, so you can use it as decoration while playing a tabletop game. Therefore it needs a spine. I glued card put together so it will keep a round shape. We left some space inside and on the bottom for all the switches and wiring for the lights. At this stage we glued the first two houses in place, but we didn't glue the rest in place because we still needed to finish the wiring and the outer case. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This would make the goblins living in our attic very happy. Last try, I'm very satisfied with the result. Speaking of satisfying, 
I really love this shot where you can see all the moss and flock. Adding stuff like this has to be one of my favorite things with all our projects. And here is the little skeleton from earlier. The glue we used for this project shrinks and gets transparent when it dries, so don't worry about the huge white globs everywhere. They will not be visible when it's finished. I also made some tiny signs for the different shops in the street. The last few parts of this project got a bit chaotic and we forgot to film some stuff. I drilled some holes into the back for the wires to run through. Now we can put the top board with the LEDs in place and connect the cables. All the wiring and switches to turn on the lights will be inside the spine and we actually built the whole cover of the book before we did any of the wiring. Let's cover our fake cover with some fake leather. But the glue is real, don't worry. Fun fact, if you prop up your camera on the table you're crafting, uh, the camera will shake all the time. It's great, try it. We used some metallic markers to give the book cover some gold details and ornaments made some edge covers out of cardboard and put some small beads on them to act as rivets. This concludes our quest for today. We are ready for the beauty shots. so much for watching and we hope you join us on our next adventure. Back. I mean bye.